it's Linda Hafner, top producing realtor at ERAQ Realty in Central Massachusetts, Worcester County. Let's talk about where the real estate market is headed for 2022. Thanks so much for being at my channel. Please subscribe if you want more information about Central Mass real estate. I tried very hard to give content to you that you're going to really appreciate. And if you subscribe, it helps me to reach more people. So that would be a really big help for me. Now let's talk about the real estate market in 2022. But before we do that, what happened in 2021? Well, huge, huge changes, unexpected changes, quite honestly. Um, in April and May, it was absolute craziness. And I'm speaking not only from what I've read, but also just personal experience. Um, it's like nothing I've ever seen. I wasn't even pre prepared for it at all. The shortage of homes in the market this year, especially April and May, I don't know, those two months were really just out of control, were so bad that people were waiving home inspections, waiving appraisals, um, going 50 to 100,000 over asking, depending on where you live. It was insanity, absolute insanity. I was dumbfounded by the entire experience. I'm glad it's calmed down a little, to be honest with you, even though I do work for a lot of sellers and, and being on the seller side is awesome, but when you're a buyer and you're trying to get a buyer a home, it's really tough. I had one buyer with FHA financing, and I'll be honest with you, we must have submitted seven or eight offers, and because they had FHA, which is a less desirable form of pre-approval uh, financing, we could not get a home offer accepted. I wrote so many offers. It was ridiculous. And I just hope it never goes back quite that bad again. Um, so let's talk about 2022 where things are still strong, but have calmed down a little bit from the frenzy that went on in 2021. I've done a lot of research and my two biggest sources were realtor.com and forbes.com. They both pretty much say the same thing, which is that 2022, 2022 is still going to be a whirlwind year. And especially for first time home buyers, they are still wanting to buy a home. And if they didn't buy a home in 2021, they want to buy one now. The inventory looks like it's going to start getting a little better in 2021. There are gonna be more home sellers in 2022, which is a good thing. It means a little bit less competition, even though the competition isn't expected to completely go away. We're still gonna be in a seller's market. There are still many more buyers than sellers, but there is going to be an increase in sellers expected in 2022. So because the demand is still there, that means that the home sales are still expected to go up, which is pretty amazing considering how far they went up in 2021. I mean, they went up anywhere between 15 and 30% depending on which month of the year you were looking at. By the end of the year, I think you were looking at an overall of in the vicinity of 15% rise in prices, um, you know, in, in general. Um, and then and then this 2022, they're still expecting a home increase of six point price, home price increase of 6.6%, which is still pretty significant. Reason is again, because there's still not enough inventory to match the buyer demand. And a couple of other factors are going to play a, 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 a part in 2022 that is going to make affordability for first time home buyers a little bit of an issue. The biggest age group predicted to be buying in um, 2022 is in the, in the vicinity of 26 to 35. That's going to be the predominant age group that's going to be buying in 2022. Um, the majority only, you know, obviously there's many more out there than that. But when mortgage rates are predicted to go up from at the beginning of the year to like 3.2, 3.3 to by the end of 2022 to 3.7%, 7 
possibly by the end of the year, you're looking at the not only the rise in home prices, but also the rise in interest rate. It's going to make affordability an issue for some of these people. And some people may have to come up with some really creative ways to still get into a house. Personally, I, I see a little bit of a shift happening. Like home ownership is not becoming a right. It's becoming almost more of a luxury. And you're really, it, it's not just for investment purposes anymore. I think that we're sort of heading toward that trend. So the people that are out there saying, you know, looking for a bargain or looking to get a great deal, that's just not gonna happen. And I don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, I really think it's more that people want a home because they want the the benefits of owning of home ownership. It's it's a huge, wonderful thing to own your own home, be able to do whatever it is you want, get the tax benefits. There are benefits, but the financial benefits are not going to be one of the highest priorities. I think it's going to be more the other benefits, like the benefits of just being a homeowner and not having to pay someone else's rent and at least investing in your own future and not a landlord's. So there is still a lot of benefits of home ownership, but I think there is going to be a little bit of a shift in the mindset, I guess, of buyers, or at least there needs to be. And I think that's gonna be part of what my job is as a realtor, is kind of informing people of this mind shift that's going to be happening. I mean, it's really going to be more of an enjoyment of life factor. Home ownership is going to be a home, like enjoying your life. Like how much do you want to enjoy your life by owning a home as, as opposed to just a financial investment. So that's something you want to mull over and see if that is something you can come to terms with. And if you want to deal with that in this market that we're in right now. Another reason why home ownership is still going to be a valued asset is because rents are rising too. They're still projected to rise 7.1%. So whether you're paying someone else's mortgage or your own mortgage, it's still going to be better to be paying your own mortgage than to be paying a 7.1% increase um, to, to someone else. So that is something else to keep in mind also. So the good news is that incomes are projected to be rising about 3.3%. So that will help offset some of the housing costs, not all, but some of them. And a lot of people are looking towards that whole work from home ideal. So I think COVID really got us into a big shift in having to go to an office every day and a lot more people are, hmm, how can I, you know, work within a city but still live in the suburbs where I can afford a home more, which is why Worcester is in the top 10 list of the hottest markets in 2022. And that is my next video. So please, after this video, check out my next one because that is going to be the topic of my next video. And I'm gonna go over the top 10 hottest markets that will be um, predicted in 2022. And Worcester, Central Mass, made the list. I was so excited. <laughs> so, um, all right, where are we? Another point I wanna make is that new construction is still not going to be keeping up with the demands of buyers. And that is because of the labor shortages and the supply shortages. We are still feeling the effects of COVID long-term and the building is so expensive. And honestly, it is actually more affordable for people to buy an already existing home than it is to build new construction because prices have just gone up so high. And it's so hard for these builders to build a reasonably priced home because of the expenses that they have. So the building rate is still not gonna keep up with the buyer demand, which is also going to affect the market in 2022. So on the whole, 2022 is still going to stay in a competitive seller's market. It is going to be still a good time to sell. However, some buyers may be edged out of the ability to purchase if they wait too long when interest rates go up. And 
they are battling both the high interest rate, higher interest rates, not high, but higher than they were. And and the rising home prices. You add those two combinations and it may eliminate some people's ability to purchase a home, but the people that can buy a home are still going to be interested in doing so. It's still gonna stay competitive, but probably not as competitive as we saw in 2021, which honestly I think is gonna be a good thing for everyone involved because 2021 was really too crazy. I didn't even enjoy it, to be honest with you. It was it was difficult market for me to work with buyers. It was, it was hard, it was stressful on them. And I would like to see it to be a little easier on you as a buyer, if you are a buyer. And as a home seller, it's still gonna be competitive enough where you're still going to be able to take advantage of getting the highest price for your home. So it's kind of a win-win for most everyone in the marketplace for 2022. And I'm excited about it. If you're thinking of buying or selling in 2022, please reach out to me for guidance or help. Love to help. And in the meantime, check out my next video, which is going to talk to you about the 10 hottest markets expected in 2022.